2030 belt drive. All right, check this out guys. I've been running these GPM shocks uh, for quite some time now. They're holding up awesome. But one thing I do know is that they are super stiff. I have them set up for big bashing, big jumps, big air. They're holding up awesome in that department. But as far as racing, they are not set up correctly. So let's go ahead and uh, change the setup, change the oil, change the springs. And I'm gonna show you guys how to bleed these and put them back on your truck super fast. Let's go. I like to use a crescent wrench. I know it's right metal to metal, but the shocks get beat up anyway, so I'm okay with it. You could use a towel, maybe a napkin or something to protect it, but there's a little notch on the shock body, and then you can just go ahead and take your cap off. So I just wanna show you the inside of the cap and show you what they look like, and then I'm gonna show you what the oil looks like as well after about five hard bashes. There's the seal on the inside. That's what the reservoir looks like up close. So there we are, still fairly clean. Not too bad, but not the cleanest. Quick also, I wanna show you guys the shock, the body, the underside. You can see there's no leak in this bin going on. It's just your typical leftover shock oil residue from maybe changing and not getting it cleaned up. So, and then again, these come with the aluminum shock bottom, aluminum, all aluminum, larger shaft, I believe that's seven millimeters, pretty big, super heavy duty. Haven't had any problems with them yet. So, all right, so there we go. We got the bottom loosened up. Let's see here. So there we go, that's what it looks like on the inside. That little screw comes up from the bottom. There must be an O-ring in there because it's kind of hard to turn. And then it's gonna push up on that little piston. Let me push that up and show you what that looks like. There's the piston and a spring. Oh, there's some oil coming out. There it is, that's what it looks like. So you got double pistons and a spring. And you got double O-rings on the top piston and a single piston on the bottom. So when you put this back together, we just need to make sure that we refill our back up with oil. And we're going with 30 weight this time. You got this all taken apart and cleaned out. You can go ahead and start your setting. I'm just gonna start mine right at the bottom. And then make sure your piston has been compressed, you know, and then go ahead and add a little bit of whatever weight shock oil. I'm gonna use 30. So we'll just add 30 weight, fill that up to the top. And you should let that rest so all the air bubbles come out. There's not much room in there for air. And then you're just gonna take your shock cap, make sure it's all cleaned up, screw it back on. And I have my bleeder cap removed. All right, tighten that back up however you wish. Don't over tighten it. Next, you're gonna wanna fill your shock body up. So I just like to lean it on its side. Whoa, pour the oil in and on the bench. Fill it almost to the top, and then you're gonna go ahead and work the piston a couple of times up and down. That's gonna force whatever air bubbles to the top. There, you see them at the top there. Whoa. Try to be more clean than me at this, because now you just gotta clean up a bunch of oil. But you could use your Cal RC Moo Clean to clean off the shock bodies with a rag. So we'll pull that down to the bottom and let that set. Now we can add a bit more. You can see you wanna to top that off and actually dome it over. So, all right, so there's gonna be a little bit of oil inside of your reservoir there. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is take off the bottom red aluminum adjuster nut. You're gonna take your shock oil 
and you're not going to fill it up, but you're just going to put enough in there to kind of lubricate what's inside there. So I'd say maybe a quarter of the way. And then what you're going to want to do is just push those pistons right back into the reservoir shaft all the way. It's going to squeeze out all the air. You can see there's that much room on the top. And then go ahead and reinsert the adjuster nut or knob or whatever you call this. It's got a little o-ring on there as well. Look at that guys. These are super nice. So I'm just going to tighten it down like I said right to where the o-ring doesn't show anymore. And then I'm just going to make sure it's compressed. Okay, there should be no air in there and then go ahead and fill up your reservoir with your oil, dampening oil. I'm using this associated uh, 30 weight and it works really well. So next you're going to take this and go ahead and screw it back onto your shot cap. Make sure you got that all cleaned up. Try not to spill any because you're going to have to fill it up top if you, um, you just want it completely full. So in order for them to work correctly. So there you go. Now we're just going to tighten them up and put them on the truck. All right. So we got one last thing. We're going to go ahead and pop this off. By the way, guys, you can do your whole truck with one bottle. This is a, uh, a four fluid ounce bottle only takes one and you actually have some left. So anyways, we got the shocks filled up. We got these two here that don't have any more air bubbles in them. And then the last thing I want to do is I got the bleeder screw out. I'm just going to cap that, plug that with my thumb. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make sure that that air cavity in there on top of that piston is full of oil which it looks like it is. I'm gonna poke around in there for air bubbles. All right, so once that's full, you're gonna go ahead, keep holding on to the cap just so it doesn't pour out the top. Grab your shock body that's full of oil, and then you're just gonna try and get that bad boy on there as smoothly as possible. That wasn't bad. All right, so you can let go of that hole. And then what I like to do is I just like to uh, thread it on there, not to the very end, just till we got a couple threads left. So I'm gonna back it off. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slowly push the shock shaft up. And I'm holding it at an angle, that way the air is allowed to escape through the top there, you can see. And I'm going to go ahead, close her tight, wipe it down, make sure she's nice and tight. And as you're tightening up the shock cap on the body, there's going to be some air escaping out. And go ahead, just push her all the way up, nice and slow. Just like that, wipe the oil. And then I just like to hold it for a second. And then what you're gonna do is just put the cap back on. All right, so there we go. Now, while you put the cap, your bleeder screw back on the reservoir, you're going to be holding pressure up on the shock shaft. That way. Oh, this is really difficult. Hold on, guys. What the heck? All right, some days your tools disappear and you can't find them. All right, so there we go. We got the bleeder nut back. This darn tool eats my bleeder nuts. So let's try that again with my fingers. I should be wearing gloves, but I can't hold on to these bleeder nuts. All 
All right, so get your bleeder nut on there and screw it into place nice and snug. Again, not over tight because there is a little washer, uh, compression washer in there, compression O-ring. There you go. And then I've got no rebound because there's absolutely no air in there. You can cycle the shock. There we go. All right, let's do it. Oh yeah, I can tell it's working better already. Oh yeah, way better, way better. Steer's better, oh yeah. That's way better. Oh yeah, way better guys. Way better. Way better. Way better.